What's up everyone, Dablade here with a patch information video for the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, but this is covering the patch 1.30. It's still good to see that CD Projekt Red are still adjusting any issues that come up with their game. This is also probably coinciding with the release of the Game of the Year edition of the Witcher 3. The patch was released earlier this week and is available for all systems. But what is included in this patch? Well, the highlights are that it introduces a number of general stability and performance improvements, and it fixes a dozen of quest-related issues, both major and minor. Some of the highlights include, for example, under the characters in the game, Vimy Vivaldi is now sporting a fresh new look. With the gameplay, they fixed issues whereby oil descriptions were not removed from the swords. An issue was addressed where it was not possible to obtain certain dye recipes. They fixed an issue whereby it was possible to skip the entire second phase of the Eridan fight at the end of the main campaign. They fixed an issue whereby the silver sword was needed to craft the master crafted legendary griffin steel sword, which was a little bit of an odd requirement. They fixed an issue whereby two NPCs from the Without a Trace quest were impossible to defeat. Never came across this one personally. They fixed an issue that allowed users to switch bolts underwater, resulting in lower damage dealt during submersion. Personally, I never really experienced this as I tried to avoid underwater combat as much as possible. Next, the correct values of the Adrenaline Rush buff during the fight against a group of bandits in the Capture the Castle quest has now been fixed. Next, they've introduced tweaks to the loot randomized system. For the better or the worst, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it will make random loot better. Well, at least I hope it does. Next, dealing a killing blow now generates the correct amount of adrenaline. A very good change for adrenaline-based builds. Next, they fixed an issue whereby Roach's tail could vanish. For those affected by this issue, swapping saddles, saving the game, and then loading that save should solve this issue. Nice to see that Roach still has issues. <laughs> Next, they adjust the maximum level for items, quests, and NPCs to address level requirements discrepancies if players started New Game Plus on a very high level. Items and quest maximum levels has now been raised to 100. NPCs maximum level is 105. Next they've corrected the statistics of the Hen, Gadif and Tesham Mutan set in New Game Plus mode. I hope I pronounced that right. Next, they fixed an issue whereby the Toussaint Knight Steel Sword diagram was not added to the crafting page after looting it. And they fixed an issue whereby the Second Life mutation could, under certain circumstances, grant Geralt infinite health regeneration. And finally, two more with the gameplay. They fixed an issue whereby the Wicked Witch in the Beyond Hill and Dale quest could occasionally prove invincible. And they fixed an issue whereby the Euphoria buff was not applied correctly after taking a decoction. So those are the gameplay changes. They've also made a few GUI fixes. For example, they fixed an issue where it was possible to place a skill in a mutation slot of a different color. They fixed an issue for those PC users when it comes to Steam controllers. They've also added PlayStation controller prompt icons, as well as fixed an issue with craftable items in New Game Plus mode having incorrect level requirements. And finally, they fixed an issue affecting the dismantling of mutagens in bulk when you're in the alchemy lab. The rest of the changes with patch 1.30 come with the quests. There are a few of them here. I'll go through them as quickly as possible. Hopefully, if you've experienced any bugs, they have been addressed. Firstly, they fixed an issue whereby it was not possible to interact with the loot chest in the scavenger hunt wolf school gear quest. I personally did experience this I did solve it at the time thanks to reloading, but uh, I'm glad that this is fixed. Next, they fixed an issue whereby Geralt's entry would disappear from the glossary once he decided to join the tourney under his true name. Next, they fixed an issue whereby two bandits outside the Nowhere Inn could prove impossible to kill during the following the Fred quest. They also fixed an issue whereby players could occasionally become blocked during the Bovine Blues quest due to a Draco Lizard's overly friendly attitude. That sounds amusing. Next, they fixed an issue whereby Reginald's statue could not be placed on the Corvo Vinanco's front yard. They fixed an issue where it was not possible to kill Morvag in New Game Plus mode during the In Wolf's Clothing quest. They also fixed an issue with the quest Equine Phantoms as progression could become blocked. 
and they fixed an issue whereby the objective to wear an entire be fit in the occasion could be displayed indefinitely after the player fulfilled the requirements in the Man from Sintra quest. Next they fixed an issue whereby the contract bovine blues again could not be completed if the big feat to fill point of interest had not been completed. Next they fixed an issue whereby Vivian could despawn in the warble of a smitten knight quest. They also fixed an issue whereby the progression of the feet as cold as ice quest could occasionally be blocked. Also regarding feet cold as ice they fixed an issue whereby it was possible to inadvertently reactivate the objective. There's also been fixes to additional instances of an issue whereby the borders meant to exist only during the night of Long Fang's quest would sometimes become enabled outside the duration of the quest preventing users from exploring Toussaint. Hughes now spawns correctly following the one more day choice in the goodness gracious great balls of granite quest. It is no longer possible to get trapped inside the pheasantry during the progression of the Gwent never fear Skelliger here quest. The next fix is to an issue whereby the progression of the big feet to field quest could occasionally be blocked. I see some of these quests have double issues that need to be addressed here. Next they fixed an issue whereby the statue in the extreme cosplay quest occasionally would not spawn. Next they fixed an issue whereby Bruxa in the Beast of Toussaint quest would display pacifist tendencies whereby the progression of the story needed her to be hostile. Next they fixed an issue whereby it was possible to interact with the footsteps during the crime scene investigation in the Beast of Toussaint quest. And finally they fixed an issue whereby it was impossible to talk to the quest giver in the quest titled Night for Hire. So you can see there's quite a few quest changes here and fixes, but it's good to see that CD Projekt Red are still addressing them. I'm sure there'll be one or two more patches eventually if you've experienced a bug that is not addressed here. But given the time that The Witcher 3 has been out, I'm sure CD Projekt Red are starting to put people on to either the Gwent card game or their new cyberpunk game. Anyway, if you're at all interested in reading the patch notes for yourself, I'll leave a link down below. And until next time, I've been Darkplay, bringing you a patch information video regarding patch 1.30 for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.